Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today we'll be talking about why Asian men can't replicate social success. And replicating social success is crucial to defining if you have made it. I've noticed that when people grow up, they tend to be more social within their groups, right? But they can't replicate that. They can't transfer that in public. They can't transfer this when they go to a new school, a new job, or a new environment. They get comfortable within the environment and who they are defined by their peers. But if you can't showcase who you typically are, okay, to strangers and newcomers, are you really successful? What you've done is you're really efficient within this specific group. It's people you grew up with probably, right, from grade school, someone you've known for many years. But if you have an inability to meet new people, without your group, who are you? So I just got back from Hawaii and I realized this, like Asians are cool there. Okay, Asians are the majority, and it's actually brilliant. I've never been to a place like Hawaii, which kind of changes my idea of how Asian men are viewed. It's cool because they have an existing culture that Asians are just normal, and it's sexy, and it's hot, and they're quite masculine out there, right? They're typically in shape, they're tan, they surf, but that's the idea of, is that they have assimilated and created their own culture of masculinity of what it actually means to be a man, and the negative stereotypes don't necessarily apply there because people have a valid image of what Asian men are because they see them all the time. They see them, interact with them, like, yeah, they kind of defeat the stereotypes. They're not like the quiet, shy, passive guy they see in TV. And they realize like, yeah, that's a stereotype. And people are quite enlightened and educated on that topic versus if you go back to the mainland and go to the South or somewhere there's not a lot of Asians, prejudices, discrimination, and biases all kind of come in because we live off the paradigm that Asian men are quiet and they suck and they're not attractive and masculine. Yeah, they're typically cool here, right? You know, if you're in a culture that accepts you for who you are, to become successful is extremely easy because it's promoted, you're encouraged to be yourself, you're encouraged to go above and beyond. But if you're in a culture where it's like not encouraged to speak out or you're punished for being weird, okay, if you're socially awkward, you're gonna be more shy and you're gonna have a lot more setbacks. In my personal life, why have I been able to be successful even though I've had a lot of adversities in my life and my personal and social life? But socially, I've accomplished a lot. I think the difference was I grew up in a deficit. I grew up in extreme deficit socially. When I went to school in Colorado, there weren't that many Asians around. I had to be forced to interact with white people and how to be successful in that. So naturally speaking, I assimilated I assimilated quite well. I figured what the lingo was, what people cared about, because that's what you do to be well liked. And I'm not saying you need to sacrifice who you are and what you enjoy doing. There's ways to bring that in. But from an early age, you don't really have an identity. You're just kind of a sponge. You don't really have a clear defined idea of who you are and what you stand for. You're just soaking things up. So naturally speaking, you want to be liked. I kind of became a people pleaser. But the benefit of being a people pleaser was I was able to pick up social awareness very, very quickly. People who typically are a pleasing. They want to please their peers at everything. The benefit is they're able to pick up social cues very well. And the only issue with that is they go too far to the spectrum that they misinterpret everything as criticism. People pleasers can't typically handle criticisms or letting people down and disappointment very well, but they do have social awareness. They're like saying, oh my God, am I being weird or being a burden to society? Okay. I think it's better to be a people pleaser than having absolutely no awareness as to what you're doing to others and the impact that you're having on the environment. I think people who lack social awareness typically are kind of awkward and weird, and maybe those stereotypes are kind of true. Typically, people who are awkward and weird get ostracized from a group. Growing up, people see that for getting bullied and stuff like that. But why is that? It's because it's saying, I can't trust you. I can't pick up a read on you. I know that you won't understand the subtle cues of my being uncomfortable, okay? Especially as a woman, could you imagine like, you can't say no directly and you're just being really weirded out and you're trying to give excuses to leave a conversation and the guy keeps going and going and pressuring, he's giving creepy vibes and you're like, dude, pick up a hint, pick up a hint. There's a reason why, because serial killers are very real, right? People who wanna hurt you, okay? So that's typically why there's an innate behavior of people not trusting strangers. Growing up, I was able to navigate this social scene. I was able to navigate this spot. I was able to interact with people of all different races, ethnicities, and social economic status. And that served me very well. While it was really hard to get started and I dealt with a lot of discrimination, long term it did teach me. It taught me very valuable lessons that I hold dearly to my life, right? It's been the cornerstone of my success. Not only did I learn how to talk to people, I got used to being uncomfortable, talking to people who thought of me as less because I was poor and maybe even Asian, but also realized I learned how to be cool because we all have similarities. There's a common theme or ethos amongst all these classes of what we want to do. We all want to be healthy. We all want to be strong. We all want to take care of the ones that take care of us. And cool people are cool. I realize that no matter what you look like, what you sound like, typically cool people 
treat you very well. I may not be able to be polite or please everyone I meet, which is normal, but I want to find the group that loves me for who I am. And that was what I discovered was not everyone's gonna like me. The thing that really served me well, because if not everyone's gonna like me, it means that it gave myself permission to fail. It gave, me, it gave myself permission to realize that, yeah, I might be awkward and some people might not accept me, but it's not a problem of my own doing. It's not a problem of my own doing. It's the fact that this person kind of sucks or has issues of their own, and we're not supposed to be homies and be cool. And that's completely okay. You don't have all the time in the world, right? So I started viewing rejection as kind of like, I was grateful for it. I was really grateful for the rejections of whether someone didn't want to be my friends or a girl denying me because it's saying, you're saving me time, if anything, right? Could you imagine that if this worked and you faked it and deep down you hated me? Like, imagine the investment and time and emotions we would be going through and just realizing that you never really liked me to begin with. Once I became successful in that, you know, I became popular amongst my peers in high school. I moved to California and it was a, kind of the same thing. I had to learn different things, learn how to navigate in my environment and the people I met obviously increased significantly and I learned a lot of stuff but I realized that cool people are cool. You have to assimilate to the existing culture that will serve you really well no matter what you are. Don't get tied to it. Yeah, there are elements of me that are quite West Coast like grew up in Colorado. Yeah, there is a part of that and that's beautiful but I'm also willing to adjust and not be using my identity from childhood going forward. It's like, yeah, I went to California, adopted some lingo, adopted some of the way they dress in the culture and life, but also carried the Colorado mentality of like being independent, relying on yourself, being a masculine guy. And then I moved to the East Coast and I've adopted the fast paced culture and realized that, yeah, maybe the way I thought the world worked wasn't quite true, but it's also allows me to appreciate family, conservatism, and the idea that I rely on a small group of people and not have interference from large government and stuff like that, right? It's kind of the idea that you choose what you want to do. But Going into environments that made me extremely uncomfortable as a child served me quite well because nothing was ever viewed as a failure. If anything, I was taking data. I was collecting a lot of data. This is how I interact with people. This is how I want to keep going forward. And especially now going to my current friend group at the Cigar Lounge, majority of the people there are significantly old, right? They're 40 plus and my, some of my best friends, they're like 70 years old. And some of them are black, white, Bolivian, but we're all there to just hang out and just be homies. And going in that environment initially was quite fearful. It was very scary because they're significantly older than me. And I realized that, well, I'm just a kid. What do I have to offer? And that was something I put upon myself. But something that they said to me was, you're a blessing and gifting us the idea of youth. You make us feel youthful because the idea that you want to hang out with us. And I was like, well, I feel extremely you know, inexperienced when I hang out with you guys. And if anything, intimidated because I'm at the time I was like 24, 25. Um, now I'm 26, my birthday is on the 9th, so cool, thank you guys for another year. Looking back, like I'm really thankful because I learned a lot. Everyone wants to mentor me, and the thing is, it's like, I'm respectful. I get it. When you understand social cues, you understand that like if someone has it, they're able to pick up on it, and nothing has to be said, like they're with it. Those are the people you want to hang out with. It's like, you don't have to say anything like logically of like, you are being creepy because you're getting too close into some personal space. They're kind of repulsed by you. You're not getting that. Like instead of explaining it, they just get it saying, ah, oh, you're on the vibe. You get it. You're on the same frequency as I am. We totally get it. It's funny because those who know won't say anything, right? So when you look at someone, you're like, yeah, cool. A really good experience was like we're in the airport with my fiance. So one lady was being absolutely crazy, okay? She's going around like cussing, speakerphone, just saying extremely outrageous stuff and being kind of weird, right? And I looked at this lady like, yeah? And she's like, yeah. Didn't even know this person, but we bounded on the idea that this person was being kind of outrageous and rude and had no self-awareness for how her actions impacted others and made everyone else uncomfortable. It's funny because I left the situation because like, I'm not dealing with this. And then everyone else slowly started moving away because uh, we didn't trust her. We felt like we were kind of in danger and was like, oh, I don't really want to be around this person because it's putting you on high alert. My cortisone's rising. I'm like sitting here on fight or flight. Like, am I safe? It's like, no, 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 no. And that's the idea. So my whole point is Asian men. If you want to be successful or just men in general, you have to be able to replicate that success in any environment. Put yourself in different environments with different ethnicities, right? Don't only focus on one subgroup of individuals or one genre. Hang out with all people and learn what's important to them, right? And learn to bond and have curiosity within, to, in, within the culture. If you have curiosity of other people's culture, it will serve you really well because most people don't want to learn anything else besides their own. 
right? We have a curiosity and ability to learn. It's like, no, I want to learn about this. Like, what's your story? Show me what's your culture, what's important to you. And because a lot of people don't have those interests, they want to say, nope, it's me, my, me, my, 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 my. Everyone's just like, it's by myself. I only care about what I care about. I don't care about anything about what other people think or other people's cultures. And it's rude. It's rude. It's selfish. It's narcissistic. But the idea of having open mind, you want to learn what other people care about and what matters to them expands your horizons. You don't get that a lot. If you want to talk about this further, please email me. It's in the description below. Follow me on Instagram, see what I'm up to. But as always, I wish you guys the best. Peace out and namaste.